In the 20s, before the military, I actually um, tried to do it myself, do it the way that everyone does it in the world, and um, it ended up into a bad place of foreclosure, car being repossessed, bankruptcy chapter seven, and ultimately being at a place of being in depression. So I joined the Navy, because that's what you do when you're in that kind of position, right? So. At 30 years old, I'm uh, in the Navy. They calling me grandpa in boot camp, you know, with all these young uh, whippersnappers. And I said, I need to learn more about money. So I started learning everything I could about money. I got my insurance license. I got my tax preparation in HR Block. And I, I worked in real estate, got my real estate license, got my Series 7, 66, got an MBA in finances, and ended up in six figures of debt again. Oh, my goodness. And Something's not working, like, man. What is going on? Even my <laughs> finance professor was broke. And God said, well, have you looked at the 2,300 verses in the Bible about money? And I said, what? <laughs> and that's when I started to learn the proper way to handle his wealth for mm. his kingdom. Now, were you a, a believer in Christ all, all this time? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's what I found out is people in the church, like I was. I was in the church. I, I had a Bible. I went to church. And, um, you know, you don't learn a lot about money across the kitchen table at home and even in church and in school. It's not a lot of talk about it. It's kind of a taboo topic because everyone gets sensitive about, you know, the bad ways of using money, but they don't learn the good ways of actually using God's wisdom with it. What have you found to be the way that people generally, whether it be people in the world or people within the church, approach the topic of finances? How do they approach it? Uh, generally. Yeah, well, the way that they see on TV and media and, and what the norm is. is like, oh, I'm supposed to get credit cards. I'm supposed to buy a house. I'm supposed to do these things, but they don't think about what God wants and what the purpose of their life is to use the resources he has given them to, to use. So take us through, as you see, the, the mindset that the Bible teaches with respect to our money. Obviously, God has a purpose for these resources that he has given, but they're not they're still his. Uh. He's given them to us to use, but they don't belong to us. That's my that understanding is. of the scriptures. Is, Absolutely. Is that sort of on target? Yes. Well, in the in the first book, I actually come at it, though, from a father and not just from ownership alone, but how a loving father who owns it all wants his child to be taken care of, you know, and it's like you're an heir to the king of kings. Then in the second book, I come at it where it's like, okay, the owner, the, the owner of the business, everything incorporated, and you're a manager in that business. How does he want you to manage his wealth for that purpose? And then in the third book, I talk about him as the generous, generous Lord that has given all, and he wants you to continue to be generous with that divine provision. Hmm. Johnny McWilliams is joining us today here on The Beating House on Faith Radio from Zero In Financial. He has written this intersection series, joining us here at the Winter 2023 Christian Product Expo in Columbus, Georgia. So let's talk about these principles with respect to managing money and really developing that mindset. So once that mindset is acquired, and I understand that in this book series, you actually don't start with money per se. You yeah. start with a relationship with Christ, correct? Correct. And even beyond that, the Lord said, your first chapter is going to be about leading people to a relationship with Christ. Like I could actually go through why you would pray a sinner's prayer and how to present a sinner's prayer in chapter one of a financial book. <laughs> yeah. And so once that's established, then how do, as you see it, we as Christians then begin to regard our finances and manage them accordingly. Yeah, it's about that radical relationship. And now thinking about prayer, how do I speak to God and ask him about money matters and listen for his command and for his word and of wisdom from the Holy Spirit when it comes to money? And I actually walk through the fruit of the spirit and how they apply to money, financial strategy and money management. 